Hello, my name is Chuck Mangino. I'm at the Hands-On Science Center here in Tullahoma, Tennessee. The date is the 26th of February, 2013. This is part two of the Stopping a Tornado series, part two. The objective is stopping the tornado while it's on the ground. Now, if you remember in Stopping a Tornado, part one, it was using computational fluid dynamics and two airborne masers to um, disrupt the pattern before the tornado actually touched down, before it actually touched down. And this is the second part here of a three-part series. Okay, objective is stopping the tornado once it's on the ground. The method I'll be using is, one is a stationary maser, and this is just all an example. The second is a mobile maser. Uh, masers, uh, think of your microwave oven uh, type of, um, they have magnetrons in there. They uh, polarize the uh, molecules and heat them up. I'll go, I, I went into that to part one. We'll go into it later in depth in part three. What our objective is is disrupt the, the vortex pattern. The vortex is already established here. The tornado has, the funnel cloud has already touched down. The to and now it's a tornado, and this is it, it, this is the point here that we that we uh, neutralize it on the ground where it's not destructive. We use the microwave pulse that I was talking about with the maser. Use weather math models, uh, computational fluid dynamics, which I've talked about earlier before, and uh, this is much more possible now with the Yellowstone supercomputer in Wyoming that just come on board uh, in the fall, winter last year. So this right here is another possible factor that can make this whole thing happen. My first, my first video and the second video, that's the key thing right there is that computer. Okay, um, just real briefly, we have the tornado here that's already touched down. We have what we're protecting, just hypothetically a house. And the way we'll look at this is as the analogy of the Wright brothers' first, first flight. Uh, when the Wright brothers were flying for the first time, they were not trying to build a 747. They were trying to build an F-15. They weren't trying to break the speed of sound, go to the moon, ETC. They were just trying to show that proven flight by man could happen. That was their first flight. That was their only objective. And that's all, that's all this is. It's just. It's just a basic bare method. Uh, I have a technological demonstrators that I have in the works, and you can actually, like, like at a hands-on science center here, you can actually watch the vortexes dissipate and be, dis be interrupted, but we'll get to that later. Um, pre here, we have the, uh, the, math, the math models are already established. Computational fluid dynamics math models what will happen, this will, the, the vortex will touch down and then th there will be a, um, a model already in the computer system itself that determines the height, the width, the speed of the tornado, the horizontal speed that's traveling on land, vertical speed as the vortex comes down, uh, vortex wind speed, what's actually happening different layers, different levels of the tornado itself, uh, the temperature inside the vortex and outside, and the rotation direction. This is very important because mostly in North America it goes counterclockwise. Sometimes it goes clockwise and that's another story on itself. So we've got to determine that right from the beginning. But, but what, what will happen, we'll hit it from two areas. We'll say, like in a, in a large city, you have a microwave tower. It's stationary, of course, and it's very high. And then you'll have, this part plays on the stationary maser here, right up in here. Uh, this is the maser, this is a waveguide. This is what you would call a barrel, as far as aiming the, um, the um, microwaves. Here is the mobile, the mobile maser here, and again, this is the maser, and this is the waveguide. 
And what will happen, we'll hit it from two different areas. One, the taller uh, stationary maser will hit it high, the funnel up high. If you had another tower here, it would be hitting it here and here, disrupt the pattern. To back it up or reinforce it, the mobile masers would be close by in close proximity, within a safe distance, but in a, clo in a close proximity to where it could affect the last fourth or third, third or fourth uh, of the cloud uh, touching down. So with a combination of these two here, we can disrupt the pattern enough to anticipate the cloud and vortex and uh, destroy the in inner structure of it. Uh, the key thing about these are mobile. These are mobile and depending on, on the, the, um, the path, the, the, vertic uh, the horizontal path of it, these can be stationed in different places at different times. So if this thing reoccurs somewhere else and comes down reforms again after it's anticipated, it can be addressed with the second tower and, and other units just like that. And I know this is just a concept, this is a basic idea, but um, we've hit it from, in our two videos, we've hit it from disrupting the pattern that makes up the vortex or, or the tornado itself, the funnel cloud coming down to a tornado. We disrupt the pattern with two 747s uh, before, the, before the tornado even existed. It was disrupted. Here, it's disru on part two, it's disrupted while it's on the ground. It's moving and then all of a sudden it gets into a populated area. These kick in, in theory, and it disrupts the vortex and the cloud and it's, everyone's safe. Um, I know there's a lot of, this is just the very basic idea. I know all that's involved, but what I'm trying to do is presenting one and presenting two is to put, put, a, put an ideal out there. Just put an ideal and just somebody run with it. Uh, this thing will not happen overnight. I do believe it will happen or I would not be up here. <laughs> but anyway, again, my name is Chuck Mangino. I'm at the Hands-On Science Center and this is part two of stopping a tornado. And we're trying to meet our objective of stopping the tornado while it's on the ground. Thank you.